Good morning children how are you all i hope all of you are well and safe inside your homes today we are going to start with second chapter in history that is new kings and kingdoms so before starting with the chapter first let us study the important terms so first one is samantas that is the subordinates of kings or overlords who used to bring gifts for their kings so these are the subordinates of the kings who used to bring gifts for the kings maha samantas or maha mandaleshwar so what do we mean by that the samantas who gained power and wealth declared themselves as maha mahabaleshwar or maha samantas so when uh, those kings had gained power and wealth they would declare themselves as maha samantas or maha mandaleshwara so this is what we mean by this term next one we have is maharaja adhiraja it means a high sounding title which is used for the great king so this is what this is a very high sounding title which is given to a maharaja adhiraja it means to someone who is a great king so these are all the terms which are related to the kings why because this chapter is all about kings and queens the new kings and kingdoms which we are going to study in detail next one which we have is tribhuvan chakravartin it means lord of three worlds tribhuvan chakravartin it means lord of three worlds next is rent the part of the product that the producers that is the peasants that is the farmers cattle keepers artisans were compelled to pay to the lords which they were supposed to give to the kings revenue revenue is the tax traders had to pay to their lords it means to their kings the tax like we pay tax the house tax the income tax so likewise in earlier times also in those times also the tax was supposed to be paid to the kings so this was that next one which we have is prashastis now what do we mean by that it is a composition in which there is a praise of the ruler depicting him as valiant victorious warrior it means here we are talking about somebody who is very victorious he is a warrior it is mainly done by the brahmans who were granted by uh, such jobs so this reward it was uh, recorded on the copper plates and it was given to those who received the land so this is what we mean by prashastis it means it tells us about a victorious warrior and it was done by the brahmans next one which we have is sultan so sultan it is an arabic term which is used for the ruler this all of you must be knowing itself so sultan is what it is an arabic term which is used for the ruler now let us have a introduction of what this chapter is all about so between the 7th and the 12th centuries many many new dynasties had emerged so some of them were gujara pratiharas rashtrakutas palas cholas and chamanas so these are what these are the different dynasties some of which you must have heard of and some you might not have heard of but we will cover them all in this topic so this was what this was between the 7th and the 12th century many dynasties had emerged now how was the emergence of the new dynasties in those times so the rich landlords they had become this uh, became the subordinates of kings and they were given the title of samantas which we have already studied in the terms and they were expected to bring gifts for their kings and so they had to be present at their courts with more power and wealth samantas became the maha samantas just as i explained in the terms with more and more power and wealth they became the maha samantas and some of them became free from their overlords it means they were free from their kings so danti durga who was a rashtrakuta chief he performed hiranya garba ritual to become a kshatriya and then he overthrew his chalukya king so danti durga he wanted he performed hiranya garba ritual to became to become a kshatriya and then he had overthrew it means he had just let Uh, go off the chalukya overlord so this is how the emergence of the new dynasties were 
now how was the administration and in the kingdoms what was exactly how was it it is all we are going to study kings shared their administrative powers with samantas brahmans traders and association of peasants here peasants means the farmers so i repeat kings they shared their administrative power with samantas which i have already covered in terms brahmans traders and farmers so peasants cattle keepers artisans and all those who produced something had to pay taxes or rents and traders also had to pay the revenue so all of these who produced something they had to pay something to the kings so in the form of rents taxes and revenue under the chola dynasty there were there were 400 different types of taxes from which forced labor and land revenue were the most common forced labor it means people were asked to be a uh, work asked to uh, work for less money and land revenue so these two were very very common and the reason for collecting taxes were to fulfill the finances of the kings establishments to build the temples and forts and all of it the high position at the kingdoms including the army were appointed either by hereditary or through influential families so if today i am the queen my daughter will also be the queen so that is what this is the hereditary system that we had during those times so that was it let us have a quick recap so firstly we studied the terms samantas mahasampantas then we had introduction then the emergence of the new dynasties how did they emerge and then the administration in the kingdoms so that was it for today i hope you have understood it clearly thank you and have a nice day